Welcome to Smart Pizza, and today I'm going to tell you what's happening at the most dangerous beach in the world. There are plenty of dangerous beaches worldwide, but there's one where even sharks can be attacked by snakes because there are so many of them. Something similar happened in 2018 in Liverpool. This strange creature was washed ashore in the English. It was literally everything that deemed to be strange. It has fangs, but it's unlikely to be some sea predator. It has spines, but that's usually observed in small sea creatures, whereas this creature was not so small. Additionally, the animal's skin was slimy, even despite the fact that the monster had been lying in the sun considerably long, according to the man who found the monster. The author of the shot couldn't understand what it was. He turned to the scientists and even to the charity, but didn't receive any answer, only some versions. According to one of them, it was a dolphin. Another stated it was a pig or just a big fish. Some consider it can be some prehistorical monster survived until now. Anything can be the case, but we can't know that for sure. The scientists didn't manage to analyze or study the flesh samples for the study. It wasn't the only similar incident in Liverpool. Two years later, people came across this. Everything seemed to be simpler with the previous monster, right? At least we could have made out a dolphin or a sea pig in it. What was that? I personally have no notion. This doesn't look like a sea inhabitant, but some giant land creature. What did it forget on the beach? And why was it found so late? What's also interesting, the flesh didn't stink at all. Considering that it had been lying in the sun for a long time, that was very strange. The video author admits that even his dog, who is always glad to study something, tried to maximally hold off this finding. Maybe it was for a reason. Anyway, the animals have quick senses of danger. Maybe that flesh posed a big threat. All in all, there are a lot of questions. It's neither a slip of the tongue nor a slip of the press. It'll be exactly about Ressie, not Nessie, we all know. It's how they called something strange found in the English city of Rokedale. On Sunday, a married couple was just walking along the bank of the quiet Hollingworth Lake when their idol was suddenly destroyed by this dreadful spectacle. I personally would never go walking there. They were very frightened by this creature about five feet long with a huge mouthful of incredibly sharp teeth. But what for a creature that was? At first, everybody was thinking it was a crocodile. Are there any crocodiles in Northern England? Zoo-related versions doesn't fit as well. It's not likely to be a crocodile that ran away from the zoo, right? It would have been caught before the animal died and decayed. Then they put forward another version. It was supposed to be a giant pike that reached such fabulous sizes. It was closer to the truth, but doesn't sound like a consolation. I wouldn't wish to swim and fish in a lake with such inhabitants. We've had Ressy with us. Why not look at Nessie as well? Yes, you can oppose saying that Nessie is an invented monster in the Scottish lake all that's fake and so on, those who still believe in Nessie can state that this monster is alive, doing well, and don't even think of leaving the Loch Ness. Okay, how can you comment on that? Look at what the woman named Lindsay Freeman found in November last year. Why not Nessie? At least you can call this something a Nessie baby, the legendary monster's cub. It has similar fins, body build, unless that it's much slower than the Scottish monster. This mini Nessie was found not in Scotland, but in England. A creature with the long neck, sea monster's body, tail, and three limbs or fins. Lindsay didn't dare to touch it. According to what she told, the animal had a smooth skin. Who is it? They didn't reach common ground anyways. Some scientists consider that this creature is related to the sharks and rays. Others think that's a sea turtle without a shell. There's also those who see Leopluridon in the Nessie baby. All in all, the modern science considers this genus of the large plesiosaurs is extinct. At the same time, there's alternative scientists trying to prove that wrong. They say like some plesiosaurs survived until now and managed to adapt to new conditions. What's interesting, the Loch Ness Monster is related exactly to the Leopluridons. Does it come out that the alternative scientists are right? 
Are Nessie and mini Nessie animals of the same prehistoric genus? What do you think? Anyway, let's leave Great Britain alone. After all, there's something strange happening in other places as well. Interestingly, all that takes place right here and now. For example, in Australia, really mysterious and dreadful creatures have been recently thrown ashore, as if the Australian people weren't fed up with other fauna problems. The slimy creatures with an unknown pattern on their body challenged many people. They couldn't understand who was in front of them. Some considered that those were sea snakes. They're not that rare in the Australian waters, and the pattern was similar to that of snakes. Anyway, those were not they. Others took them for a new shell species thrown ashore or something like that. Still others were sure they encountered aliens. What does come out of this? So what's to come? The alien forms of life don't feel confused anymore to meet us and make their presence felt in such a brazen manner. For better or worse, this is not the case. In reality, those strange creatures were Ascidians, this type of animals. When they're in the water, they resemble jars and other vessels, but when they're thrown ashore, they turn into this something. By the way, that happens more frequently than many think with the Ascidians living in the coastal zones and shallow waters not so deep. It's also interesting that the Ascidians' patterns are not real patterns. Each element is a separate creature, a zoid. They're genetically identical and form the common colonial organism. Though it seems to sound a little dreadful when we speak of them, that's not that bad in reality. The Ascidians are not dangerous for people, so you can breathe out. Though it isn't worth doing that, don't relax for now. Look at what else you can find on Australian shores. At times, such strange and unknown creatures can be washed ashore. This is exactly what was found in the summer of 2022. A girl who found this creature compared it to a horror film hero and told that she had never seen something similar. Personally, I see something similar for the first time. As the girl told, the monster bore a resemblance to a living colony from a hundred of shellfish. They simply hang there. Some of them even move their bodies. The scientists came to the conclusion that these shellfish could have been goose shells that are considered a delicacy in some countries such as Portugal and Spain. Let's suppose. What about the main bodies? Who these shells clung to and why did they do it? This remains unclear for now. Here's what they found in Australia earlier. A very strange fish. It's very difficult to identify it. Judging by everything, it had been lying for a long time and got noticeably changes. It's not clear what's on its left side, either a fin or its skin. In any case, I hope that this fish looked not that dreadful in the water. Otherwise, the ocean seems to be an even more frightening place. Something strange has been happening in Australia recently. First, some mysterious sea creatures appear on the surface, then unknown objects of this kind. Maybe that have some significance and we need to prepare ourselves. Indonesian Monster Let's zoom in. We've already seen many big creatures washed ashore, but what about this one? Just look at it, how giant the creature is. As the eyewitnesses say, it was 15 meters long. The monster was paddling in shallow waters by some Indonesian shores, decayed, frightened by its insane look, and made some people contemplate only one question. Hmm. What is it? Truly speaking, it was difficult to answer it. Some think it's a whale, which is logical. Others found that it was a giant squid washed ashore. As far as we know, none of these versions was confirmed. Maybe it was something like the sea devil. Do you think they don't exist? I also thought like that, but then saw another video. I'll show it a little bit later. Let's look at the strange thing happening in the USA. There you can meet intruders on the shore. This way, in July of 2012, a mysterious body of some creature was discovered. It happened on the East River Bank under the Brooklyn Bridge in New York. They named it the East River Monster. The animal was largely discussed. After all, some found it was Chupacabra, the mythic creature. According to legends, it inhabits Northern and Latin America. Chupacabra attacks animals and sucks out their blood. There were no victims close to the East River Monster, but on the outside, it quite looked like Chupacabra, the way it's described in legends, stories, and mystical forums. Anyway, it's not likely to be a Chupacabra. It's not worth getting upset because of it. 
let it stay only in myths and legends. Concerning the East River monster, it was likely to be a pig's body left from a barbecue. Seems to me that was the case. It happened in July when the Americans celebrate their Independence Day. Possibly the pig was prepared for the festive event. It seems like the Brooklyn Bridge attracts all the very strange creatures. Was it a coincidence that almost a year before the East River monster was found, people had come across another creature washed ashore? Here it is. What's interesting, it was exactly that monster named East River. It was only later when the nickname came over to that pig from the Independence Day. A small crowd of people went to the place. Everybody was interested who exactly was washed ashore. It was both interesting and creepy. People were afraid to touch this fish with bare hands. That's why they poked it with sticks to assess its body and teeth. It's considered that nothing supernatural happened. Apparently, that was a sturgeon. But even if it were the case, that was one of the largest sturgeons that had ever been washed on the shore of North America. Let's come back to Great Britain. Do you still remember how many different creatures the residents of this Isle State have found recently? That's not the end. Not so long ago, something even stranger was discovered there. It's not surprising. After all, that's Demogorgon from the series Stranger Things. Do you remember such a monster like heroes were fighting against? This one opened its mouth and head, forming something like petals, whereas another one had its tentacle taken apart almost in the same position. Anyway, that looks unpleasant enough. What's more, they have these shells hanging on the tentacles. The woman who discovered that Demogorgon says she has a good knowledge of the nature, especially local one. However, that was her first time when she saw that. And what's interesting, the appearances are deceitful. The scientist who studied the shot supposed that's not some deep water monster, and what's more, not a real prototype of the villain from the film Stranger Things. Judging by everything, that delicious selfish named the goose neck that costs a lot and differs by its taste. Even if it's true, I wouldn't try it after watching the video. And you? What about this creature? Would you try it? I'm sure that many of you have given a negative answer. But wait, you may change your mind. It was on the Folly Beach in South Carolina. Ten-foot-long creature seriously challenged the locals. In the end, they didn't understand who that was, either an unknown sea creature or a commonly known fish. There were also those who found it was a dinosaur, dragon, or an extraterrestrial creature. And as it often happens, the scientists are just clear. This time they managed to examine the flesh properly due to what they've understood that it was the Atlantic sturgeon, an eatable and tasty fish that was unlucky to find itself in this position. And now we're going to visit Australia once more. Do you remember me talking that something strange was happening there? It turned out to be dragging on for a long time. In 2016, on the shore of Lake Macquarie in New South Wales, a strange creature was discovered and named the monster from Macquarie. Visually, it seemed to be some mutated dolphin that in some way found itself in the lake or a crocodile albino having problems with its health. The scientists supposed that was a pike conger washed ashore. These are big fish that reach 8 feet in length. That's not a bad version, but many didn't agree with it because these fish inhabit in tropical and subtropical zones of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. How did this conger find itself in the Australian lake? There are chances it's true, but personally, I think that wasn't a conger but somebody else, the one who's about to be open as a species. Now I'll tell you about frightening dens of different creatures. Ilha de Quemada Grande A snake den is a real horror, a place that frightens everyone, even those who are not particularly afraid of these slithering creatures. Usually we see a bunch of snakes only in movies and think that in reality it's impossible to see such a place. But the island called Ilha de Quemada Grande proves us the opposite. It's located 22 miles from the Brazilian coast. From the outside, it seems that it's just a paradise on Earth. A very cozy, nice green piece of land, which would be nice to visit to relax. But if people take a closer look, everything immediately falls into place. Ilha de Queimada Grande is home to several thousand snakes, crawling literally at every turn. And it would be okay if they were all non-venomous, but they're venomous. They belong to the species of golden lancehead, 
incredibly venomous pit vipers that live exclusively in Brazil. One bite of this lancehead is enough to kill a human within the next hour. And since it's time-consuming to swim from this island to Brazil and find doctors, consider that a golden lancehead bite on the island guarantees a person's death. It's not hard to guess that people wouldn't want to live in such an environment, so the island is deserted. But how did this place become a breeding ground for dangerous snakes in the first place? They couldn't have taken over the island, could they? Legend has it that in the past, pirates hid their many treasures on Ilha de Quimara Grande and then to protect them, polluted the small island with a giant number of venomous snakes. It's up to you whether to believe this legend or not. There's another theory. According to it, the island did not exist in the past. Ilha de Quimara Grande was part of Brazil, but suddenly the water level began to rise rapidly and soon it cut off the land from the mainland, turning it into an island. With the isolation, the ancestor of the pit viper became the dominant species, which had virtually no enemies and could evolve in its own way, not like the snakes on the mainland. Because the basis of nutrition due to species scarcity was birds, the golden lance had needed stronger venom. Due to the fact that the venom of this snake is five times stronger than its mainland relatives, it instantly kills its prey. The target of the attack of this predator is most often birds that sit on trees to rest. So the snakes spread across the island in a fairly short period of time. The conditions are favorable, no one disturbs them, it's just a paradise for Golden Lance as the Rat King to appear. And what's its purpose? Write in the comments. Have you ever heard of such a thing as bioluminescence? It's a phenomenon in which a chemical reaction causes living organisms to glow. Well, that's exactly what makes the fireflies in the Indian Wildlife Sanctuary produce flashes of light. It's just amazing. The place where huge and dangerous animals, such as elephants and tigers, rule during the day becomes a stage for tiny creatures in the evening. At nightfall, the forest is illuminated by literally millions, if not billions of lights. These bugs have a special light organ, and it's this organ that turns on at night. The bugs light up for a reason. It's a call for mating games. Less often, they may communicate with each other in such a way, inform about the approaching danger or even mislead. There are predatory fireflies that prey on their own kind. Can you imagine that? In nature, there's a female that purposely lights up as if it's ready to mate. However, if a male comes to visit it with an open soul and good intentions, it's immediately caught in its mouth without a chance for mercy. Another magical thing about these bugs is their ability to synchronize with their congeners. Millions of creatures simultaneously light up and extinguish, create unique patterns and scatter into separate pieces. Of course, not all of the many species of fireflies have such a talent to light up simultaneously. In addition, the glow depends on the density of habitat of these insects. But in the tiger reserve, it's very high, so the local forest turns into a magical theater of light and shadows. Pink Flamingos Camargue is a park in the south of France and the only place in Europe where you can see pink flamingos. Of course, other living creatures also live there. For example, there are 272 species of bird in the park, but the main ones are still pink flamingos. In winter, they have a richer color than in summer. This is caused by the fact that they eat small crustaceans with huge amounts of substance called carotene, which affects their color. Visiting Camargue, you'll be able to see not just one or two of these beautiful birds, but several thousand members of this rare species at once. In fact, it's the largest colony of flamingos in the western part of the Mediterranean. To get better acquainted with it, it's recommended to take at least one tour, of which there are many. Speaking of tours, imagine the face of people who bought tickets in 2007, were waiting bad for this moment, and the flamingos just took off and left the place. How's that possible? It's really quite simple. It was something of a strike by the birds. They didn't like that the activity of the nearest salt factory led to a side effect in the form of pumping salt water into the lagoon where flamingos nested. As a result of this boycott, the pumping stopped and the area was sold to the French government agency responsible for coastal protection. Since then, experts began to monitor the environment and the flamingos returned. Rabbit Island Sounds like a place from some cartoon, doesn't it? But in fact, it's more than a real site located between the islands of Honshu and Shikoku in the inland sea of Japan. 
The area of the island is only 0.2 square miles, but that's enough to surprise visitors. Only rabbits live there, and there are at least 700 of them. Don't worry, once on the island, you do not lose them out of sight. They're literally everywhere. These animals are wild, but because of hunger, they're almost completely devoid of fear and instinct of self-preservation. Also, due to the lack of natural enemies on the island, they're extremely sociable and are ready to cling to every traveler from all their sides in order to get some kind of treat from them. Besides, rabbit hunting is strictly prohibited there. Nevertheless, the island's history is not as rosy as it may first appear. In the past, there was a secret plant for the development of production of chemical weapons. It was built in the late 1920s. It's easy to guess that because of this, the island was erased from the maps, so no one knew about it. Time passed, outsiders were forbidden to enter, and the plant was producing 6,000 tons of toxic gases a year. The only creatures on the island besides humans were rabbits, which were used here as experimental subjects. After the end of hostilities, the plant was erased not only from the map, but also from the face of the earth. Here it will be possible to end the story and tell that supposedly the rabbits managed to survive, reproduce, and take over the island. But it wasn't like that. People simply came and eliminated the remaining rabbits, not because of their cruelty, but because they were infected and could negatively affect the environment. To atone for their guilt, the Japanese promptly brought in new, already fully healthy rabbits and allowed them to flourish and develop in peace. It was a reminder to the people themselves that life will still conquer the shameful desire of humans to exterminate each other. The island called Aitoliko is truly beautiful. Southern sun, mild climate, warm water. What could go wrong? But here come the spiders, which are much better than tourists in terms of competition for a place in the sun. Finding themselves in ideal climatic solutions, they begin to actively mate, which is why very soon the whole coastline, including bushes, trees, and an island infrastructure are covered with dense cobwebs. The scenery is truly eerie, reminiscent of a setting of a horror movie like The Mist. And when you think about the fact that all of this is not the work of architects or designers, it becomes even scarier. Palace's Cats Wild, vicious, and at the same time incredibly charming. That's what we can say about our next guests, Palace's Cats. Like all other cats, they're adorable, but few people know that they should not be underestimated. These cats are older than even saber-toothed tigers. As a separate feline species, the Palace's Cats appeared on Earth about 10 to 12 million years ago. Over such a long period of time, Palace's cats have had time to perfectly adapt to the conditions of life. For example, they've acquired fluffy fur. Each 0.1 square inch of their skin has up to 9,000 hairs, up to 2.7 inches long. This fluffiness allows Palace's cats to survive in harsh conditions. Since they have fur, they do not need to rub against their congeners to keep warm, which means they can go on a free and independent voyage through life. Only during the breeding season, Palace's cats gather in groups for a few days. At this time, by the way, as in general always, Palace's cats live under rocks in old burrows of marmots, foxes, and badgers, as well as in small caves and crevices of rocks. Thanks to their perfect hearing and amazing eyesight, these predators sense a threat a mile away and change their location if necessary. In this, they're helped by their perfect coloration which allows them to camouflage in the steppe landscape and catch their prey by surprise with just one jump. Prairie Dogs These creatures once totaled as many as 800 million, but due to changes in environmental conditions, that number has dwindled to just a couple million. How could this be possible? Because prairie dogs are never lazy, and their underground den cities are proof of that. Each chamber in the burrow has its own purpose nursery, living room, restroom, and so on. The grass around the exit is always eaten, so they can see predators from afar. But as it turns out, that can be not enough. Maybe it's all about their excessive sociability. They talk too much with each other and let their guard down. In the vocabulary of prairie dogs, there's a sound for every object on the prairie. There's even a signal to indicate a hunter. As for their den, I forgot to tell you that they also build an earthen rampart at each of their entrances. 
it protects the dwelling from flooding and serves as a watchtower from which prairie dogs watch the neighborhood. As for their diet, it consists mainly of plant food, with few exceptions. These creatures are not aggressive at all, because of which they're sometimes tamed by people. The main thing is to go in search of your prairie dog at any time of the year, except for winter, because in these snowy and cold periods, they hibernate. Pikas Having heard the name of the creature that will be discussed now, people will be divided into three camps. Those who hear about them for the first time, those who think that I'm talking about birds, and those who mean a rodent by the name Pika. Let's see who's going to be right. Outwardly, they resemble either a hamster or some kind of mouse. Pikas live in colonies of 50 to 60 individuals. They build their nests mainly between large stones, but sometimes they dig their dens in peat soil. Pikas are diurnal animals, preferring to sleep at night. During the day, they are not particularly anxious, as their coloration, obtained from birth, perfectly helps them remain anonymous and not to be seen. Even people with their advanced technology have trouble finding these animals and studying them further. Such a cute name the Pika got for the funny sound it makes. They resemble either a whistle or a squeak. This is how the animals communicate with each other. And one last fact for anime fans. The Pika was the inspiration for the most famous Pokémon on the planet, Pikachu. Now, I'll show you the river monsters of the Amazon. River Police I'm sure when people go boating on a river, they can't even think of a beaver attacking their boat. This animal never makes the front pages of newspapers describing attacks on people, but I wouldn't advise writing it off because of that. The fact is that beavers with their incredibly large front teeth can be quite dangerous. I think you already know that these rodents don't weigh too little. The weight of these rodents reaches 66 pounds. They swim at a speed of 6 miles per hour and feel great in the water. But if suddenly they don't like someone, if someone's on their territory, or make rude gestures in their direction, the beaver will cautiously hit the water with its tail. If you see it in person, like these guys in the video, it's better not to waste your time and sail away, because it definitely won't bode well. Encounter to remember In the case of beavers, you may still have some doubts about your actions. After all, you do not encounter these animals every day, and you do not know how dangerous they are. But in the case of bears, things are much easier. These big creatures, as the following video shows, swim well and can even growl during this process. Luckily, these people managed to sail past the aggressive animal and prevented it from reaching the boat. I think if the eyewitnesses had been a little slower, this video might not have made it to the internet, if you know what I mean. The next, much less tense but no less dangerous encounter, took place in the homeland of the creepiest and at the same time most unusual creatures in Australia. A resident of this continent was standing up paddleboarding when an unknown snake suddenly crept up on him. It's good that he didn't dare to pet it or take a selfie with it to remember because this creature could be very, very dangerous. The fact is that sea snakes are several dozen times more dangerous and toxic than land snakes, although intuitively it doesn't seem so to us. Their venom acts in a matter of minutes, so it's simply not possible to save yourself from a bite in such conditions. However, the individual that the man encountered most likely belonged to the species of the golden sea snake. These creatures are venomous but not too much. They use the toxin only to make it easier to digest food. They grow up to six and a half feet in length, have a flat tail, and large lungs that allow them to spend several hours underwater. Now it's my turn. How do you feel about surfing? Something tells me that most of you have seen the process but have never tried it for yourself. Well, if that's the case, think twice about where you should start learning it. I wouldn't choose open areas like seas or oceans because there, at any moment, brazen squids can steal the board from you. This one, for example, grabbed the board and forced the man to jump off it. Apparently, the underwater inhabitant really wanted to try to surf personally, and the man still didn't give it a place. By the way, if you didn't know, you should never joke with these creatures. At the base of their tentacles, there's an oral apparatus. With the power of its jaws, the creature can crush the skull of any large fish. Squids are naturally predatory creatures, and they feed on any living organisms smaller than them. 
even relatives are among them. But let's get back to our brazen squid. In fact, the story was a little different. This animal was injured and so it was asking people for help. Surfers quickly realized this and dragged the poor thing to the shore, where they called for help and managed to provide the necessary support. You can imagine how desperate the squid was that it dared to ask for help from some humanoids it didn't know at all. It's an amazing story. That's all, guys. Which animal moment surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you later.